Well, we're thankful for you joining us for our Uplifting You at 11 uh, program for today. I'm Brother Paul Williams, the minister of the Metro East Church of Christ, bringing families together in love. And we want to welcome you to our program. Now, first and foremost, uh, we're sponsored by uh, Mama's Meals, which is located right here uh, at the church. Uh, we're located at 1820 Highway 80 West in Jackson, Mississippi. And we want to invite you to come by. Come on down and get a plate uh, here at the church, uh, just the way your grandma used to cook it. Uh, you get a meat and two vegetables as well as a bread or cornbread and and that's available for you for six just a little bit over six dollars which is the best deal going in the city we are also sponsored by uh, the metro east learning center that's our daycare that's now available at 1155 jackson boulevard uh located here in jackson mississippi now the number to call is uh, 601-352-2662 601-352-2662 and it's located right around the corner and we have a wonderful curriculum that's set up and ready to help your one the five-year-old have a leg up in their academic progress now in addition to that uh, we're also sponsored by the School of Religious Studies. Right now, uh, you're, we're going to have classes that will begin this fall where you can actually uh, register for a two-year uh, degree in ministry work uh, that's going to be available courtesy of the um, School of Religious Studies. Uh, they're going to be offering that program absolutely economical right here in the Media Jackson area so that you can answer your call from God. Uh, you can simply go to their website, schoolofreligiousstudies.org, and you can get the latest information on that. Uh, that's going to be signing up at, at our, Jackson, at our uh, campus here in Jackson, Mississippi, at the Metro East Congregation. Today, we're going to be talking about, we'll be coming from Proverbs chapter 28. Uh, I believe it's 26 is what we're thinking about. And it begins to talk about what we are charged by God to do uh, in order to, uh, to, to become a blessing to ourselves. Uh, today's world is filled with uh, those who would want to hide their eyes from the poor and act like the poor is not there or act like we have no obligation to help those that are in need. Now, we, of course, are not talking about helping able-bodied people who can work for themselves and who can provide for themselves, but they're just simply, well, quite frankly, lazy. But we can't use a few bad apples or a few manipulators or a few flim-flam people to justify our being selfish or stingy with our blessings. Now, God begins to entrust us with certain certain levels of prosperity. And once we receive those things, then he really watches how we handle our wealth and our prosperity. And, and one of the first things he does, he checks and see if we're giving back to the church. What's one of the first things that we're supposed to do with our wealth, with our, um, with our resources, is to support the local church. And see, that way, that's how the local church is able to support uh, other ministries and people that come in with need. Now, as you take a look at Proverbs chapter 28, and we're going to focus on verse 27, and I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible, and it reads like this, He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Okay? Now, it's saying that if we hide our eyes, act like we don't see, I don't see the person that needs food. I don't see the person that needs clothing. I don't see the person that needs uh, some help, uh, you know, and just and just trying to make it for today. Then God remembers that because as we give to those who are really in need, we are we are now being the eyes and and the ears and the and the and the helping hand of God in the situation of those folks. Because see, somebody right now is praying for a breakthrough. Somebody right now is praying for somebody to give them what they can't provide for themselves right now. And that person is waiting for you to be that breakthrough for them. Because without that breakthrough, they're wondering if God is real. And God has put you in place in their lives to prove that he is indeed real and that he is able to bless those who pray to him for deliverance. Now, who else should God work through except for his people to provide deliverance for those who need help and deliverance in their lives? See, God is not going to send an angel from heaven with resources from heaven to come down and help those who are on earth. God has angels on earth, messengers. That's you and me. When we're blessed with the ability and the opportunity to bless someone who's dealing with a situation that's beyond their control, and they've done all that they can do, then the person that has the giving heart, God remembers that person. God remembers the mercy 
and the goodness and the deliverance that that person provided for somebody else. Because see, what goes around always comes around, okay? And as that is, is understood by each and every one of us, that we begin to understand that I have to do whatever I can to help those when I am able to. Now, obviously, you know, you can't give somebody your rent money because you need your rent, obviously. But, but God gives us more than that. God provides for us more than what we need. And he gives us some things that we want as well. And sometimes we, we, we don't want to sacrifice a comfort, a creature comfort of our own in order to help somebody with the essentials that they need in their own lives. Now, think about this. God has undoubtedly, at one time or another, given you a way out of no way where you couldn't have seen where it was coming from. Now, imagine who God pricked, God pricked somebody else's heart to bring you out of a tough spot. Amen? Now, now God is pricking your heart to help somebody else in a tough spot. Now, we're not talking about supporting somebody and their irresponsibility of ducking their duties or ducking their responsibilities. No, we're talking about somebody who has been faithful to God's word and God's will and who simply do not have the resources in order to address the essentials. You know, when we talk about how am I supposed to help somebody? Well, I need to just throw some money their way. Actually, that's really not it. Because see, throwing a little money their way, that's almost a shortcut way out of some things. Now, some things require money, plain and simple. Um, and we need to be aware of it and available if that's what God needs in that situation. But you are God's agent of mercy, of grace, you're the Jehovah Jireh that God has put in someone else's life. And I want you to think about that. When you are the Jehovah Jireh, when you are the provider, when you are the provision that God has put in place for someone else's life, it is important for you to be there and to be that, that, that ram in the bush for someone else. And that's what today's, entitled, uh, today's show is entitled. You are the ram in the bush. Our blessing is his blessing to somebody else. First of all, we see here in the, in the scriptures. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. Now, that's the first thing. When you give to the poor, the destitute, those that are really in need of help, when you do that, you are not going to lack for anything. Now, God has promised that in his word. So when you give to the poor, you are not going to lack what you need because you're giving to somebody else. But because you've given to somebody else, God makes provisions for you because you reap what you, that's right, what you sow. See, when you sow generosity, you receive generosity. When you sow compassion, you receive compassion. Everything that you sow, you will reap in return. And so it says, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Now, you notice here, God is not specifying he who is saved who doesn't help somebody. He's saying he, anybody. So anybody who hides their eyes when the poor is in need and and this also implies you have the ability to help them and you hide your eyes okay now if you are one of the poor and you can't help other poor folks well then obviously you can't do that because you don't have the ability to help but no matter what situation you're in you're able to help somebody in some manner and a lot of times we say well i don't have the money to help somebody i'm poor myself well you know what if god has put a provision in your hands that can help someone else, you still do it. Why? Because God knows what you're able to do and what you can't do. And God is still finding out and, and letting us see what we are really about, even if our poor, poor condition. You know, someone, people tend to say, well, as soon as I get some money, I'll do thus and such and so and so, and I'll give to the church and I'll do this and I'll do that. But, but you know what? Whatever you do with $1, you're going to do the same thing with 10 or a hundred, or a thousand, or a million. Because who you are, and your generosity is not based on the money you have, your generosity is based on the person that you are. And that's a truth, no matter how you slice it. You see, if you don't make giving and sharing a part of your life, then God cannot give and share with you. You see, it's an unjust God that gives you everything you want and you give nothing to anybody else. It's an unjust God that would do that. And we don't serve an unjust God. We serve a righteous God who is fair, who is just, who is merciful, who has the, the poor in mind. Even when the world may try to forget the poor, he always has them in mind. In fact, Jesus gives us a very riveting 
understanding about how he feels about those who are in need and who we would skip over casually and not make any provisions for. In Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 31, notice what Christ says. And I just want to read this to you because I want you to notice, first of all, this is not about money. Secondly, this is not about providing somebody money for their hairdo or their cell phone or so they can go to the ball game. We're not talking about entertainment. We're talking about essentials. We're talking about being mindful that there's somebody who's really in need. Okay? Now notice this. It says this in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. And this is the mission and the ministry of the church, quite frankly. It says, When the Son of Man shall come in glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall gather all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Now, notice the story. The sheep, which are the obedient, from the goats, which are the stubborn. Because goats in this story represents those who are stubborn against God's will and against God's agenda. So you're either a sheep, co that means you're, you're cooperative and willing to be moved and guided by the shepherd, or you're a goat. Now, if you've ever seen a goat, I mean a real goat, not the ones you see on TV, but a real goat. A goat has the personality traits of a very stubborn animal that you literally have to beat to near blood to do stuff. And a goat is a good example of stubborn. That's, why the, that's where the phrase stubborn as a goat comes from. Because a goat is the kind of animal that you literally have to abuse to do what you needed to do. Whereas a sheep, you just guide a sheep and it's, it typically just goes where it's supposed to go. A sheep needs guidance, a sheep needs teaching, and a sheep needs protection. But notice he says God is going to separate the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. Now, biblically, on the right hand, right hand is usually the, the, the side of, of glory or of honor. The right hand of the throne. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God. These are, when, when the Bible refers to the right hand of something, it's referring to a place of honor, either of honor or authority um, or of favor. Okay, a position of favor. And the goats, the stubborn, are on the left. Okay, now. Then he says, then the king shall say to these on the right hand, come ye that are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom. This is heaven now. Prepare for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Now, Notice none of these things have to do with money. Now, you may need money in order to make a provision for somebody who is a stranger and uh, they needed to be taken in, or you might have to have some money in case you need to clothe somebody, but nowhere does it say, I was broke and you gave me some money. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. So actually, and, so, and, here, and, here's, and here's something else. A lot, of people, a lot of times people come to the church for money and they get mad because the church doesn't give them money. Actually, the church is not responsible for giving you money or making provisions so that you have money now the church is charged by God to make provisions for somebody if they need food or if they need clothes or if they need shelter you know place to stay or if they're sick to go visit them or if they're in jail to go and check on them. yeah or if they're thirsty give them something to drink this is what Jesus is asking for us to do but but nowhere is Jesus saying I was broke and you gave me some money to hook up my bills nowhere does the Bible say that anywhere does it say anything of that sort and so that's why we have to remember that hey God never said for us to provide money for folk but he's telling us to provide essentials for people amen now hang on one second